Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And uh, today, I want to do a little lighthearted video. I mean, I know that we're going, everybody's going through some tough, stressful times now. So I thought it would be a, a good time to try to make people laugh. So um, what I'm going to do is I have a book that I've kept for years. Actually, it's two volumes. Um of quotes that people, quotes that people have, or things that people have said to me, or discussions that we've had that I were hilarious. Now, I've done that for not only sports-related things, but, you know, other things, politics, uh, just normal, everyday course of life things. But today, I'm going to share some of the funny sports-related quotes most of them are going to be from friends of mine, and um, a few will be quotes from actual, you know, celebrities. I, I say celebrities, but maybe not so much celebrities. It's just um, people that you would know about. Um, so um, sit back and enjoy. Uh, I Some of these I will have to set the stage for them because they were part of a discussion that myself and other people had so um you know i might have to set it up so that you can kind of get the joke um also i want to point out before we get into the video that there's nothing really embarrassing for anybody in any of these quotes except maybe for me and that's fine because i'm okay with that but um, yeah, so the, I won't, because um, there are some things that I've got in the book that probably would be embarrassing for other people. So let's get started with it. Uh, the first quote comes from July 4th, 1996. And um, I was at uh, Camden Yards with a friend of mine, Chris Dufour. I've had him on the channel several times before, as you might recall. Now, I don't know how many of you don't go to baseball games all the time, but at this point, 1996, I hadn't been to a lot of live baseball games. Okay, so I just want to start by saying that. So there was a ball that was hit down the line, and I said, down the line and foul. And then my buddy Doof said to me, it was never fair, ever. Kind of funny, but anyway. So let me see. Um, okay. Oh, this is a great one. I was, again, it's a Chris Dufour, me and Chris Dufour. We were playing a Stratomatic game years ago. And um, he was running a league. He was doing the league himself. But every once in a while, he would have somebody play one of the other teams in games just to help him, you know, play the games and keep the stats for the other team. So we were, we were playing a game. And um, and I was going to take a pitcher out. He said, and he said to me, Zalk, you're going to take him out? He's pitching a one-hit shutout, though. And I said to him, now this was his league, remember. So I said to him, I said, so are you saying I can't take him out? And he said, no, you're the manager. You can do what you want. And I said, okay, I'm taking him out. And then he said, you suck. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, that was a good time. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. I was talking to my brother Jim, and I was talking about the movie Mr. Destiny. If if any of you out there have never seen the movie Mr. Destiny, I highly recommend it. It is one of the funniest all time. Like, really, it's high on my list. But anyway, um, I said to uh, I said to my brother, I said they picked a bad example for that movie. I don't think hitting a baseball in Little League could change your life. And my brother said, well, I don't know. It could have changed yours. So I'll leave it to you to, to figure out how good I really was at baseball as a kid. Um, oh, yeah. We had a league where there was only like four of us playing. And we each had two teams. 
and uh, Stratomatic. And my team won the World Series with 80, I think we had 88 wins, and then we won a one-game playoff, which caused us to win 89. And then we went on and we won the World Series. And my brother said to a friend of his, remember, Bob's White Sox won the World Series that year, 1991. And Dave, said, his, his buddy said, yeah, that team was terrible. Uh, oh, yeah, and I said to, one time I said to a friend of mine, um, we were in a softball league, and we were in the softball league for years. And oh, I said, Doof, actually, again, Chris Dufour. I said, remember me in softball? My average fell every year. And he said, yes, it did. You were the Dave Stapleton of Media League. And if you don't get that, go look up Dave Stapleton stats. Um, okay, this was between me, my brother, and, and another friend of mine. My brother said, all right, Bob, you're saying you could hit Tim Wakefield? And I said, well, I'd have a better chance of hitting a knuckleball than a fastball. And then Jim's, my brother's friend said, okay, I'll give you that. And then my brother said, yeah, I'll go along with that too. So let's see here. Um, yeah, Chris Dufour again. He's, and by the way, Chris Dufour is in this book a lot because he is my best friend and we've been friends since probably seventh grade, I think, so. Um, uh, it was him and me and my, uh, and my younger brother, Jim. And he said to my brother, Jimmy goes, tell me the truth, Jimmy. Are the New York Rangers the worst team you've ever seen? Come on, you can tell the truth. They suck, don't they? You, me, Bob, Donnie, and Dave could beat the Rangers. I don't remember what year that was. I didn't write that down. Okay, this is a good one. Um, my brother went to a ball game with with Chris Dufour, and I think it was I think it was a game in Boston. And uh, and Jim said to him, "Doof, what would you do if Mike Stanley hit that sign over there with a home run?" And Doof said, "That sign right over there." And Jim said, "Yeah." And Doof said, "Can't be done." And then Jim said, yeah, but what would you do if he did, though? And Doof said, nothing, because it can't be done. <laughs> so, let's see. Oh, yeah. I don't know how many of you out there remember Chad Kreuter, who used to catch for the Dodgers and probably a couple of other teams. Might have been the Rockies. I'm not sure. But um, in, this is another one you might want to go look up his career statistics. But um, one time, a buddy of mine, Jim Williamson, said to me, nibbling the corners on that guy is bad policy. Because Chad Kreuter was not a very good hitter, but he always had a lot of walks and a higher on-base percentage than someone of his hitting ability probably had a right to. So, let's see what we got here. Oh, okay, yeah. One time I said to Chris Dufour, I said to him, I don't put my field manager record and my GM record together. We don't actually manage our teams in the uh, in the uh, play-by-mail leagues. In those leagues, you just make a CM, you send it to the um, commissioner, and he runs the game. So I said, we don't actually manage our teams. Hal does. And I don't want to take credit for Hal's mistakes. And then Chris Dufour said to me, yeah, well, he doesn't want to take credit for yours either. Let's see here. Oh, this is back in the 90s. This is before the Capitals were the uh, juggernaut that they've become lately. Um, I, uh, I said to him... Uh, that the I told I told um, my friend uh, Jim Williamson I said 
the Capitals are a hard-working team. And he said, yeah, well, hard-working is fine, but even some C students work hard. You know, now that I think about it, some of the other quotes were probably funnier than the sports quotes. But this is Sportsman Z, so I'm going to stick to the sports quotes. Although maybe I'll do an episode sometime on the uh, general quotes. Uh, we'll see. Leave a comment below if you want me to do one where I am just talk about just the general everyday funny quotes that I've got in this book that are not sports related. Um, oh, yeah. Chris Dufour, this was, uh, I don't remember what year this was either. But you know the Yankees-Red Sox have historically a great rivalry with one another. So um, one one day Doof called me up um, and he said, so did you watch the Red Sox-Yankees game the other night? And I said, no, there was a special on the History Channel about Sherman's March. I watched that instead. And Chris Dufour said, oh yeah, how did that work out for him? And then Jim Williamson. Jim Williamson and Chris Dufour, like I said, they're all over this book. Um, he said, I also loved how he's talking about the Stratomatic computer game and in a playoff uh, game that uh, the computer was managing his team. He said, I also loved how in a game, late in the game, up steps Jacobs, a 5R, and Hal thinks it's a good idea to keep Grilly, a right-handed pitcher, into pitch. Yeah, the, some of the, mis the decisions that the computer game makes, you really got to scratch your head about them. Oh, yeah, I said uh, to a friend of mine who was from Pennsylvania, I worked with a guy that was from Pennsylvania originally, um, from western Pennsylvania, where Pittsburgh, around Pittsburgh area. And I said, Bly Levin finally got elected to the Hall of Fame. I think he's going, I think he's going to go in with a twins hat, though. And my friend said, yeah, probably. There's only two pirate hats in the Hall of Fame. And one of those was left behind by the janitor. And then Jim Williamson, describing uh, one of his teams to me one year, said, I have 163 outfielders and a pitching staff out of the movie Army of Darkness. All right, so now I got a couple from Bill James. Everybody knows Bill James. He's the baseball guru, the guy that, you know, kind of uh, spearheaded the analytics movement. So he's got a quote where um, in one of his, um, I think it was in one of his um, baseball annuals. I think that's what he called them. Those were great. I loved those. But in one of them, he says, all of us no matter what we do, have a tendency to coast for as long as we can until a crisis forces us to really find out what we can do. If I were running the Indians, I'd create a crisis for Rick Manning in a hell of a hurry. And then uh, there was another one where he said, the Expos, on the other hand, chose the intangible virtues of Doug Flynn. The reason they're intangible is because they don't exist. All right, now this was, these were from Chris Dufour when he was going on a bit of a rant one time about um, this, and this was in 2013. And uh, I happened to have a great team that year, actually. And I usually don't have a great team. If you had ever had any doubt about that, go back and check out a couple of my videos. But anyway, um, he was talking about one guy had, uh, Josh Beckett on his team and Josh Beckett had a 143 earned run average for the guy and he said Josh Beckett for Chuck has a 143 ERA 143 that's better than Bob Gibson and Bob Gibson was good and then uh, yeah and then we were talking about how my team uh, remember I told you in this particular season I had a very good team I think I won 96 games 97 games never came anywhere close to winning 97 games in a season. And it it's, I mean, that's how rare it is. That this was the only time it happened. 
And um, I had, but my shortstop was Brendan Ryan. Now, if you know Brendan Ryan, he was a great defensive shortstop who could not hit to save his life. And in this particular season, he was hitting 124 for me. Now, this is a league with a DH, okay? Everybody had a DH. So, um, Doof said, your team leads the league in runs scored. And you're doing that with an eight-man lineup. That's never been done in the history of the league. you got to admit, that he had a good point there. Um, then there was a trip to Philadelphia for us in 2013. We went to see the Phillies play in Citizens Bank Park. And uh, it was me, my brother, um, I think both of my brothers, and uh, Chris Dufour. And my brother said to Doof, the weatherman says it's only 85 degrees today. And then Doof said, well, the weatherman needs to get his ass down to Citizens Bank Park then. Um, and then Jim Williamson was saying about the computer game. This is a statement he had about the computer game. I don't expect the best possible solution. But I do expect the computer to avoid the worst possible solution. And it does, like I said, it seems sometimes that that's what the computer does. Uh, let's see. And now here's a quote, and I don't remember the pitcher. I just marked down that it was an, a National League pitcher from the time of Stan Musial. And he was asked how he pitches Stan Musial. And he said, I throw in my best stuff, and then I run over to back up third base. And then I said to uh, one of my friends, uh, a buddy of mine, this is from the same year, that same year that I won 97 games, I had Greg Dobbs on my team. And Greg Dobbs was hitting great for me. He hit great for me most of the season. And uh, I was talking, I was talking to him about, um, I guess, actually, I, I think this was a year or two later, and he, in, in real life, Dobbs was starting at first base for the Nationals. And I said to my buddy, I said, my man, Greg Dobbs is starting at first base tonight for the Nats. I love Greg Dobbs. And he said, he's a modern day Greg Gross. Nobody loves mediocrity like you do. You have a way of spotting those marginal players and utilizing them to keep your teams from, from progressing. It's an unconventional style that not many subscribe to, but you have used it to the fullest. You know, something tells me that wasn't a compliment. So, let's see. Uh, hmm. Oh, and then I said to my brother, also, if you watch the channel, if you follow the channel, you know I don't talk about basketball. Because I don't really like basketball, and I never really got into it. So, uh, in 2015, I said to my brother, you know, the only Stratomatic game I never tried is basketball. I should get that to see how it plays. And he said, first you need to know how real basketball plays. Now, uh, let's see. Oh, now here's a quote from, uh... From, it was on the NFL Network, and it was from the it was the NFL's all-time top ten underrated players. And uh, the guy said, and, and I guess Dave Craig was on the list of underrated players. And this guy said, Dave Craig is underrated because you never think about him. Someone else always has to bring him up, and then you respond to him. You're never generating your own Dave Craig thoughts. And now this is a quote from Bob Gibson. Um, he said, uh, he said, guys were always afraid I was trying to hit him. If I was trying to hit you, you knew it because I hit you. And then Jim Williamson, again, was talking about um, Mike Zanino. And this was years, this was in 2017. When um, he and he had Mike, and I think he still might have Mike Zanino. But anyway, he was always hoping for him to turn the corner, you know, and become the Mike Zanino everybody thought maybe he could be. And he still hasn't. 
But anyway, back in 2017, he said he'll hit 500 with eight walks and three home runs in spring training. And then the season starts and he puts on his monkey hat. Um, and then one time he was talking to me about my team and he was going down my pitching staff. And then he said, oh, and I forgot about Gio. You have him too as your fourth starter. And I said, yeah. And I got R.A. Dickey as my fifth starter. And then he said, well, I, we won't talk about that. I was trying to keep the discussion positive. Uh, oh, and now this is from Stacy Dufour, Chris Dufour's wife. And uh, we were sitting at the table with Stacy's mom and Chris Dufour and me and her. And we were talking about real baseball, and then we would switch to talking about Stratomatic, and then we would switch back to talking about real baseball. And Stacy looked at her mother and said, they're alternating between real life and Stratomatic. I've learned to ride the wave. Uh, and then Jim Williamson in 2017 said, a guy wrote an article where he said the Yankees are turning up the heat on the Red Sox. They're three back with five games left. So either he doesn't know what it means to turn up the heat, or he's bad at math. And then, uh, this was from 2018. I guess I had a pretty good team in 2018 as well. And, um, I, and I made a comment to the league commissioner, Tom Bunch. I, and he's in here a lot, too. And I, I probably made a comment to the effect that I, I have a good team this year. And he said, yeah, amazing. It's like you invented the wheel after I gave you a wheel and the blueprint for a wheel. And then one time I said to him, uh, in 2019, I said to him, I improved by 20 games over last year. I realize the goal is to make the World Series, but Rome wasn't built in a day. And he said, you've had over 20 years to figure out how to build Rome. Now, these are from Baseball Prospect. These last two, these are the last two. And these are from Baseball Prospectus 2020, the new one that just came out. Um, to say Brandon Dixon was a bright spot in an otherwise dark season for the Tigers isn't really accurate. He was more like a bike reflector in a black hole. And then uh, this one in the Phillies write-up. Roman Quinn has two problems. He can't stay healthy, and when he does stay healthy, he's not very good. So I hope you enjoyed uh, some of those quotes. They were, uh, you know, I thought they were kind of funny. Um, maybe some of them weren't. Maybe some were more so than others. But uh, maybe I can do an episode sometime where I do the other more general quotes about life. Um, see how you would like that. Um, but, uh, you know, it's a tough time for everybody. So I just wanted to do a lighthearted video that uh, gets at the point um, of, you know, trying to lift people's spirits. A um, couple of announcements. We've got the game the 2008 bears um game 11 of the season against the seahawks will be coming out at one o'clock on sunday the um what will it be third the fifth of april yes and um then the um and then uh, also i will very soon be coming out with my compilation of the statistics from my 20 simulations of the baseball season using the Stratomatic game engine and putting all the players on the teams that they should be on and let you know um, how that came out. Um, and then maybe someday I was thinking, I was looking around at some of the other um, things that are going on, uh, people playing like um, uh, the show 20 MLB, the show 20 and like using the current rosters and like just playing the season 
and like you can you know bring up the games they're like an hour and a half so maybe I'll take the White Sox um, in that season that I set up and just start playing them game by game and post the games up see how we do with that I'm always a little leery though about starting a baseball season especially one where I'm you know, I'm going to be putting up, uh, you know, the games either quite often or every single game because I have a tendency not to finish baseball seasons because they're just too long. So I'll give that some more thought. Um, again, leave a comment. Let me know if you'd like to see that. Um, it might be something that's interesting to watch, although it would be the White Sox. And I understand that um, not everybody has my passion for the White Sox that I do. Um, but anyway, you know, I mean, I would also show the other standings and have all the other teams playing each other in, you know, in the computer mode. So anyway, that's going to be it. I've rambled on long enough. So that's going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.